Hey all, um, I wanted to make a quick video to show you how to use a really cool program, Tracker Video Analysis software, um, that can help you get some good data for your final projects. So the program is called Tracker Video Analysis. So if you go ahead and search just on Google or whatever, Tracker Video Analysis, it should the first hit the fizzlets.org tracker. If you click on that, you can see here there's places to download it for Windows or Mac or even for Linux. So you follow this, click through, download the program, and you'll get something that is this right here, Tracker Video Analysis Software. So what this program does is it allows you to take a video and use that video in order to extract, track and analyze what my wife just said in the background, uh, in order to get some good data of things like velocities and positions of different objects that are moving. It works really well especially for things that happen over short periods of time if you use like a slow motion video or something. But anyway, uh, so I just made a video of my dog Gus real quick. So I'm going to go ahead and open this file of the video of my dog Gus. So I'm going to go in here and find my videos. And we see here's Gus with his toy. So I'm going to open it up, and you'll see the video of Gus catching a toy that I was tossing him. Eventually it'll open. Okay, it's taking longer than I anticipated, but apparently I have a nice high-quality video. All right, so here you can see the video of Gus jumping up. It goes slowly, frame by frame, um, which is a nice feature in allowing you to click through. But anyway, I did this a couple times. Apparently Gus is not a wide receiver, I think he's more of like a lineman, but he does finally catch it on the last try. Anyway, so on this video I'm going to show you how you can track both the toy and or track Gus. Alright, so let's go ahead and get started. Let's say we want to track the ball and Gus's head both to see what their relative speeds are while he's trying to catch the ball. Alright, so let's jump back here. The first thing you're going to want to do anytime you're using the software is you need to calibrate it. So I recommend usually putting into the picture somewhere a meter stick or something at the exact same depth as the object that you're trying to measure. So this program is able to measure the speed of an object but the way it measures it is in terms of like pixels in the picture per second which it gets from the timestamp in the video. And so instead of using pixels, I want meters. And so I'm going to tell it what is some known distance in the picture by putting in a calibration stick. So right now it's saying, okay, let's call this 100 arbitrary units. Well, I didn't put a meter stick in here, which I should have, but I didn't have one with me. But I did just measure the distance from the inside of my elbow to my wrist. And it was 24 centimeters. So to get this into metric... I'm going to say that this distance, this number of pixels from here to there is 24 centimeters or 0.24 meters. So once I do that, it automatically will calibrate everything and be able to give me my speed of the ball and different things in metric units. So the next thing I want to do is I want to track the ball. So I'm going to create a point mass, all right, and it automatically goes back to the very first frame of the video. So I'm going to fast forward and skip that first toss to Gus and start right here when I'm about to start throwing it again. And so to track, I click on this mass A, the first thing that I'm going to be tracking, and I'm going to hold the shift button and click on the center of Gus's eggplant toy, and it automatically advances to the next frame. And each time I just keep clicking on it frame by frame, and it's going to be able to measure now the distance and the speed of this eggplant from frame to frame in both the X and the Y direction. So I can continue to click on it as it tosses up. Again, each time just trying to click on the center. And clicking on the center of a, something like this toy sometimes is a little bit hard to do. You might want to put a piece of tape or something on your object to really have a very clear, nice contrast point to click on. So I can keep, keep clicking on it. Here we go, frame by frame. And now Gus tries to catch it. And I'll click on it right as it doinks right off of his lower jaw and bounces off and now I get the speed after that collision. Okay, so that's probably good enough. So I got that and you can kind of see the path as you move through the video. It'll show you the last few frames each time. Over here though you see in this table you have 
the time, the X position, and the Y position. You can click on table and have it tell you the overall velocity, the X velocity, the Y velocity as a function of time as well. So if I close that, you can see now in this data table, it tracks the velocities in each position. So you can, if you wanted to try to see, oh, I wonder where it reached its maximum uh, vertical motion. You can see here as it leaves my hand, the highest speed it had was about 3.8 meters per second. Then it slows down as it's getting higher and higher. And you see right here it goes from being positive to negative. So that's probably when it's right as it, its peak height. Notice during this time my x velocity is relatively consistent. Not perfectly consistent, but close. And then you can see it continues. And then if I click on any of these points to try to see where those are, it'll show me where exactly it hit his mouth and so on. You can see the x velocity goes from negative moving towards Gus to positive moving away from him after it bounces off of his mouth. So pretty cool, right? That's nice and beneficial. And now I can go and do the same thing if I wanted to create a second mass and maybe track Gus to see what his velocity is at the time of impact if I wanted to do some conservation of momentum or something. So I create another point mass, mass B, which I will now want to track. But again, I want to fast forward to when he's getting ready to catch it the second time. So again, I'm going to skip a little bit of these first few points because he's not really doing anything. And now I'm going to track Gus. So maybe I'll track his nose. So I'll just click on his nose in each frame. And now we can track and see, again, his position as a function of time. Now as he's jumping up, you get an idea of what his upward velocity is as he's getting ready to catch the ball. And look, his velocity is almost zero as he's trying to catch it. Now his head's moving forward because he obviously misjudged it and it hit his lower jaw. So I can continue to click on his nose as he then falls down. And again, I can go over to the table and add velocity or any other variable that I want to track. And you can see it here in this data table. I can go back to mass A. I recommend, too, a lot of times is just go ahead and highlight this data that you get and copy and paste it over in, into an Excel document. You can just copy and paste it straight from here into Excel and then do further analysis. Um, you notice that there's a place where you can get acceleration on here, but acceleration is actually really not very accurate in this program. So let's say I went to the Y acceleration. It should be negative 9.8 meters per second squared when it's in free fall. And you can see it's kind of close, but look, it varies everywhere from negative 7, negative 11, negative 9.9. .9. Now it's really close, negative 8. You know, it's really kind of bouncing around. It's not real consistent. Um, and then when you're it's impacting Gus's face. You can see it's all over the place. So it's better to do an average acceleration using Excel or something like that. So anyway, that's the tracker video analysis software. There's a lot of other how-tos on YouTube if you need additional help with it, but I thought I'd give you just a quick introduction. So let me know if you have any questions, and yeah, feel free to use this to get some good quality data. If you're having things that are happening very quickly, make sure to use the slow-mo feature on your iPhone if you have one of those as it has a lot of frames per second which gives you good data for things that happen over a short period of time like a baseball bouncing off of a baseball bat or hitting a tennis ball with a tennis racket those sorts of things anyway have yourselves a box for the weekend